So this past uh, Thursday was the summer solstice. And we are still in that summer solstice energy. It's a very powerful and potent energy. It's filled with ancient wisdom for us if we turn to it. And so this is what uh, I am bringing you today. The power of this idea of solstice and what that represents. So the solstice is a time where here in the Northern Hemisphere, we welcome summer. Happy summer, everyone. Happy summer. Sun, sun, sun. Here we go. Uh, see what we did there with the song and the making it all? Okay. Um, so the solstice is known as the longest day of the year, and it marks the very, very beginning of summer. The summer solstice reminds us to celebrate the nourishing light of the sun and the light within each one of us. During the summer solstice, the sun reaches its highest point in the sky and gives us the longest day of the year. And on the summer solstice and this time uh, of year, we are reminded and invited to take a moment and to honor the lasting power of this light as it nourishes and sustains life on this planet. We are reminded that we live within this very light, and this very light lives within us. And this is the sustenance that we need. Isn't it amazing how Mother Nature just does it all? So my talk today is called Our Solstice Light. Some of you may be perhaps more familiar with the winter solstice. There's usually a lot of fuss and, 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 and good stuff around that. We certainly celebrate it here. Um, and, and the winter solstice traditionally celebrates honoring this idea of sort of death and rebirth happening in the winter. The summer solstice, however, is about honoring the sun at the height of its power and its light. Because without the warmth and the light of the sun, there could be no life on earth, and there would be no harvest. The ancient people across millennia understood the power of the sun, and they saw it as divine. Many cultures and religions worshipped sun gods. That's how important the sun is to humanity. The ancient Egyptians and Greeks, the Incas in Peru, the indigenous peoples, of North America and Australia, the Celtic people, Shintoism in Japan, and it goes on and on. So we have been honoring the power of the sun and its divine meaning for millennia. So I would like to invite you in this next moment to think like a gardener would. So planting happens in the spring. The spring then could represent action, action. This is when the planting is done. And the early summer, the time where we are in right now, represents the trust and patience that the action will bring to fruition. There's so much going on in the soil beneath the surface. But above ground, we can't see the progress and the growth that is happening, and this can make us a wee bit impatient. Anybody? Just me? Yep. Speaking of um, patience, I'm laughing because uh, the spiritual principle I'm talking about today is patience, and I'm gonna connect how the solstice is so beautifully aligned with patience. And I have to tell you, last night at 8 p.m., all my internet went out, and the half of the, all the electricity on the back half were, the, were my offices. Of, of. So I got to practice so much patience. <laughs> and when, I, when I, I came here, actually, last night to print out 
uh, my talk, and then I woke up this morning bright and early like I always do on Sunday mornings, and I make changes, and I, I have, you know, to my notes, and I have downloads that come in that, that happen during my dream time. Of, oh, I want to tell them that story. Oh, that's better. I like that better. That'll teach that part better. Oh, yay. Oh, let's unpack that. So I made all of these notes, and I changed the whole talk on Word, Word document, and I came here this morning, and I went to print it here, and it would not print. <laughs> and Shelly and Mary and I were laughing in the reception hall, and I was thinking, well, isn't this fascinating? I'm talking about patience, and I'm getting the opportunity to really practice it. Oh, I love how God works most of the time. No, I'm, I'm teasing. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, so, so patience, this divine principle of patience. Because growth is always happening above the soil, right? But there's so much happening underneath that we cannot see. I would like you to consider for a moment what is it in your own life that you are wanting to grow? What seeds have you planted in the form of ideas, wishes, dreams, intentions? Is there something perhaps that you can pinpoint in your life that you just want to have now already? Like my notes from the printer. No, I'm kidding. Can you think of something, something that you have been intending to experience, to have? I, I invite you just into that for a moment. Understanding that the spiritual principle we are sharing and unpacking together is patience. The light of the divine, and in, in this case, we're using the metaphor of the solstice sun is always, always, always providing nourishment for our growth. However, we can become impatient. Welcome to the human race. It is written, love is patient, love is kind. Not, love is watching the clock and just be kind already. Right? Love is patient. Love is kind. Patience is kindness. When we are patient with ourselves, patient with others, that is kindness in action. That is love in action, but we so often forget that. And you know, society is no help in our spiritual goal of patience. Not at all. Amazon delivers right to our door, and if it takes more than one day, we get impatient. We no longer have to, you know, sit down at a table with a big stack of encyclopedias or go to the library and collect the books and go through those books to answer a specific question. Google does all of it for us in a nanosecond. It's more information than we can even contain. I remember when I was a little, little kid, and we got our first microwave. Our first microwave, the idea that we could heat up food in a minute, that was like an idea that came from the moon. We were much more used to waiting back then. Do you remember when we all got speed dial? Do you remember how many phone numbers you knew when you were a kid? How many do you know now? I have no clue. I have four daughters. I do not know their phone numbers. They're on, thank you, Shelly, same. They're all on speed dial. I know my parents' phone number, but, right? So, so what's happened is society has, has brought us into this rush, rush, now, now, impatient energy field that we get to unlearn. We get to remember the patience of the divine. We get to step into the spiritual art and practice of patience. So my daughter Flynn has so many wonderful gifts, and one of them is actually gift giving. She's one of those people that gives the best, you know people like that in your life, they give you just the, the best gifts, the most meaningful 
gifts. It's not about money, it's about the meaning and the thought behind it. And for Mother's Day, she created this basket, and it was so dear, she just put in things that she knew would have meaning for me, and that we shared. And uh, one of the things that she put in that basket was so sweet, it was a hydroponic sunflower plant. Do you know those? You can actually grow it in a jar on your windowsill. You don't have to garden it in, in your garden outside. You can actually grow it on your windowsill. It came with a whole grow kit that included this really beautiful kind of colored mason jar. It had sunflower seeds. It had this wick thing that goes down into the jar. It had this thing called a cocoa disc that turns into some sort of magical soil that doesn't need to be in the air. It had a packet of carbon that magically, I don't know, it's like fairy dust, poof, and science. Um, it makes this, the, 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 the flower grow. It has these little stones that you mix in there. It's quite extraordinary. The stones are designed to absorb the water and do other magical things. It's so very cool, and I was very intrigued and excited to put it all together. So I carefully followed the directions, and I placed my mason jar on the windowsill, and I waited, and nothing happened for quite some time. I would wake up in the morning and have my cup of coffee and I'd be like, no, okay. And I'm wanting to succeed with this because I had this vision of taking a picture of my beautiful sunflower plant and sending it to Flynn and saying, thank you so much, my darling girl. But nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. And I thought, well, maybe I did something wrong. Maybe, I don't know, the magical ingredients were not mixing, or I don't know, maybe I didn't do it, whatever, I don't know. And then I found myself, um, as the days went on, because it's supposed to be, be quick, as the days went on, I would <laughs> stand there and I'd be like, really? Come on, come on. Nothing, 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 until yesterday. <laughs> until yesterday, I woke up and I saw this, the tiniest little, I mean, like you'd get a magnifying glass, but it was this green sprout. And I thought, ah, yes. When I looked at it, I really, I giggled out loud because there it was. It was like the universe was saying to me, Shannon, darling, patience. You can't rush these things. I don't know, somehow I thought, come on now, would make it grow faster. No, no. Ralph Waldo Emerson, who is considered to be the father of new thought, wrote, adopt the pace of nature. Her secret is patience. Adopt the pace of nature. Her secret is patience. That little teeny tiny sprout taught me so much about how long I have to go. You know, it doesn't matter how long you've been in this teaching. Whatever it is for you, for me, I'm learning in this experience. Wow. And I thought I was pretty patient. But it's amazing when you start to get granular with spiritual principles and unpack them you can notice where your growing edge is. This early summer solstice time that we are in right now is about celebrating as best we can this metaphorical restful pause, if you will, that the solstice reminds us of. Whatever ideas or projects or intentions that you have planted in your life thus far, know that there is a natural and important incubation period that you cannot see. And the harvest will come up for you when it is ready. Divine timing is always at work. And we spiritual people on a spiritual path have the opportunity to trust in the timing of spirit and to honor its wisdom. This is a time to gently water what we have planted and to tend to the soil in whatever way supports it, knowing that we can't rush it. 
And you know, again, the wisdom of Mother Nature, and I love how this so beautifully aligns with our calendars here in the Northern Hemisphere. You know, the kids are out of school, faith. Folks are often on vacation around this time. And I know for many of us, we're still busy working and all of that, but there's a feeling that we are being invited to rest, to rest. Perhaps to have a lazy Saturday, you know, go to the farmer's market or the beach or a pool or, or just have a cup of tea or a bubble bath, whatever you can do to mindfully and consciously engage in rest right now is a spiritual practice. And it's required for our growth. It's required. This is the natural rhythm of how we are meant to live, living with equilibrium. So I ask you, where in your own life can you slow down a little bit and enjoy this rhythm of rest? Where could you fit that in? to your life, to your schedule. If you are retired, one of the things that I have learned from you is that folks that are retired also have to create mindfully time to actually engage in rest that from a conscious perspective, you know, from a conscious place as part of a spiritual practice. The author, Oriana Green, wrote, I am summer, come to lure you away from your computer. Come dance on my fresh grass, dig your toes into my beaches. I am summer, come to lure you away from your computer. Come dance on my fresh grass, dig your toes into my beaches. I spoke last week about the concept of love or spirit or God. You get to choose whatever word you like. Walking into our lives through other people and the ways that that supports us. Also how love walks in through our own inspired and sometimes channeled ideas. And channeled simply means a particular idea that feels very connected to spirit. And I would like you to consider that love also walks in when we consciously choose to rest, to give ourselves permission to breathe and to be patient, to be patient. Easier said than done, I know, but very possible, very, very possible. The Buddha was a beautiful teacher of this idea. And patience is a major aspect in the Buddhist tradition. There's an old, old story uh, that I love. It's about the Buddha. One day he and his students decided to take a pretty long journey. And finally, after a very long time of walking, they saw a small lake in the distance and they decided to stop near that lake. And they were thirsty. And as the story goes, the youngest, most impatient student wanted to support the Buddha in every way that he could. The Buddha knew this, and so when they sat down, the Buddha turned to this young student and said, I'm thirsty, can you please bring me some water from the lake? And the student got up and hurriedly went down to the lake, but when he arrived, he noticed that a well-driven path right next to the small lake had an, uh, a, 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 a crossing of oxen had just gone by, and all this mud was dumped into the place where he would be able to get the water. And so the water was muddy, and this young student thought, oh no, I can't. I can't bring my teacher this water. And so he went back up to the Buddha and he said, I'm so sorry, I, the, the water was muddy. We can't drink from the lake. And the Buddha just said, ah, and waited. And so the student sat down and started to wait, to meditate. 30 minutes later, the Buddha says to the student, please go and bring me water from the lake. And the student thought, uh, okay. And so he went down to the lake thinking it's just gonna be muddy. Why, why? And sure enough, 
the water was muddy. And so frustrated, even more frustrated, he goes back to his teacher. He goes back to the Buddha and he says, Buddha, there's no way that we can drink from this lake. We're just going to have to get up and go somewhere else and travel to the next town to get water because it's a, it's a muddy lake. And the Buddha simply listened. Hmm. So the student sat down and just started meditating again, trying to anyway. And an hour later, the Buddha turns to the student again and he says, I'm thirsty, please go get water from the lake. And the impatient student was like, are you kidding me right now? So he walks down to the lake, he's grumbling the whole time. He's like, why am I doing this? Is there, we, just, I, we have to go to the next town, this is ridiculous, this is absurd. And, he go, and the lake was clear. It was completely clear. He was so excited, he got the water from the lake and he brought it back to his teacher and he said to him here here astonished that he was able to get clear water from this very muddy lake that in theory could not have possibly cleared in just an hour and the buddha looked at the cup of the clear water and asked the young student what did you do to clean the water the, the young man didn't understand the Buddha's question. I mean, it was really obvious. He hadn't done anything. He had just been sitting there next to the Buddha, and then an hour went by, and he went down, and the lake was clear. The Buddha looked at him and smiled, and he explained, you waited, and then you let it be. Therefore, the mud settled on its own, and now the water is clear. You let it be. You let it be. You trusted and you let it be. What in your own life can you let be right now? You know what that is. What can you trust and simply let be knowing that that mud will settle and that water will once again be clear? The thing is, divinity in us, our inner wisdom, the indwelling spirit within us knows the power of the pause. We so often unconsciously muddy up our minds by looping the problem and the, the lack of speedy results that we see. But just like the Buddha's student, we can end up focusing on what we don't have or what is wrong, which only agitates us further and makes us or our outlook on the situation worse. In New Thought, we understand that what you focus on increases. And so if you are focusing on the mud, what are you going to get more of? Mud. We have an opportunity to allow ourselves to trust the divine plan for each of us. And that eventually, just like that teeny tiny little green blossomy thing in that little mason jar, that blossom will happen in your life. It's a matter of trust and patience. So, If you find yourself in this place, in the waiting by the lake place, about any situation in your life, I want to give you a quick and easy spiritual tool to support you. It's actually a really ancient spiritual tool, but the modern version of it is called the 90-second pause. Some of you will know this, and if you do, I'm going to really invite you to revisit it. I was pausing for many 90 seconds last night and this morning and before service. It's powerful. MRI studies of the brain have shown that 90 seconds is all it takes to identify an emotion and allow it to dissipate. That's it, 90 seconds in your brain. 
Harvard brain scientist and author Dr. Jill Bolte-Taylor wrote, when a person has a reaction to something in their environment, there is a 90-second chemical process that happens in the body. After that, any remaining emotional response is just the person choosing to stay in that emotional loop. What? 90 seconds. So, you know what? Just, just experiment with this idea. Just experiment with this idea. The next time you get stressed and you're not seeing the results, or that harvest that you so carefully planted, whatever that may be, it's different for everyone, I invite you to pause for 90 seconds. You can even put a little timer on your phone. And simply notice. Label what you're feeling in that moment, like, okay, I'm feeling impatient or I'm getting angry. By naming it in real time, it actually drives down the activity in the amygdala, calming that part of our brain that is involved in emotions like impatience and anger and fear and acting out behaviors. Just pause for 90 seconds in real time. It will help to gain control, balance, equilibrium, and patience. It will bring you back to center. Michelangelo said, genius is eternal patience. Genius is eternal patience. Wow, there's so much wisdom in that. There is so much wisdom in that. I learned something recently that I've been thinking a lot about because it's just so sweet. So there's an area in India, in New Delhi, and when the traffic light is red, it displays the word, relax. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? Can you imagine if we had that here? Just every time you're at a red light, especially if you're in a hurry, and the red light just says, relax. I am going to invite you this week, every time you hit a red light, to visualize the word relax. I don't know how long lights are red, 90 seconds, I have no idea. But that's a really cool tool. Are you with me? Yeah. All right, you hit those red lights, that stop. Time to relax, time to relax especially when we consider all that's going on in our world today. All of it, all of it. The question becomes, how can you relax at those red lights of life a little bit more? For the Native American tribes in Oklahoma, the summer solstice holds significant meaning and importance. They see the setting of the solstice sun as the start of something new. For some tribes, it is treated like New Year's. Isn't that cool? It's seen as a whole new beginning, even though they cannot yet see their harvest. They recognize, they recognize that it is a whole new beginning, even though they cannot see any growth happening yet. Such wisdom, such wisdom in that. I invite you to remember that you are so deeply loved and that this time can be a beginning for you. If you decide it is, it can be. You are held by the divine itself and despite the hurried pace of this world and all the things that we currently live in, I invite you to rest, to relax, at the red lights, and to know that patience with a capital P, the spiritual practice of patience, is deeply connected to trust, to trusting that the divine has this, that the entire universe has your back. A hundred percent. Yeah. Trust, my friends, that spirit is at work under the soil of your life now and always.